So it's been a week, or it's actually been more than a week, that I've been using this M4 MacBook Air in this barely blue colour. Now this is the base model, and I specifically went for the base model because I believe that's the one the majority of people out there are going to be getting. And what better version to get than the one the majority of people are going to be looking to buy. So let me know down below in the comments if you did get an M4 MacBook Air, which model you got. So I know if I was right or if I was horribly wrong. Now I've been putting this M4 MacBook Air through its paces, doing all my YouTube stuff, so 4K video editing, photo editing, sending emails and general day-to-day -day usage. Is it a worthwhile investment and a worthwhile upgrade from the previous generation? So if it's your first time on the channel and you consider subscribing, if I own your subscription, hit that subscribe button down below. Like the video if you end up liking it, share it with your friends and family if they like tech content that I make. And let's check out the last week with the M4 MacBook Air. So the M4 MacBook Air, not much has changed from the previous generation when we talk about design and build quality, apart from the color. Instead of getting space gray, now we've got this at times silver looking and at other times it's got like a hint of blue in there, sky blue color. Otherwise you've still got the same unibody aluminum chassis and that great build quality we see amongst the majority of Apple products. Combine that with the lightweight, I think it's under 2.7 pounds, you really do get a portable powerhouse when it comes to the performance. And then when you add in the edge to edge keyboard, and that huge trackpad, it really does give you an experience that's very hard to switch to another device. Now, like I said, from the previous generation, design hasn't changed much, but Apple are probably going for that, if it ain't broke, don't fix it approach. Now, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect, but I don't think it's meant to be. This is now currently the cheapest way to get into the Apple Mac laptop area. And for those people out there that are not doing professional level grade stuff, this is gonna be a really, really great option. And then the display, I mean, what can I say? It's a fantastic display. You get the 13 inch or the 15 inch. The one I've got here is the 13 inch. So we get a 13.6 inch LED backlit retina display with 500 nits of brightness and very good color accuracy. Now you may have some issues outside in the direct sunlight because of that 500 nits of brightness, but generally from what I've experienced, if you're inside or you're in the shade outside, you'll be perfectly fine. Something to note is it does run at 60 Hertz, for the majority of people, this won't matter. If you're somebody that's nitpicky about this 120 or 60 hertz and you're very used to 120 hertz per motion displays, you're gonna notice the difference, especially when you're scrolling, but otherwise it is a very nice display. For consuming entertainment on the M4 MacBook Air, the speakers, considering they're hidden and you can't really see them easily, I would say they're decent or even pretty good to be honest with you. Now, if you want to get more punchy bass and louder output, you're going to probably go for a MacBook Pro anyway. But otherwise, I would class them as decent to pretty good. Generally, if you've got an Intel-based MacBook or an M1 version, you're going to probably notice quite a big difference coming to an M4. If you've got an M2 or an M3, although you may not notice a big improvement when it comes to rendering times or loading and stuff like that, the chip is faster and more power efficient. Now, sending emails, browsing the web, generally viewing entertainment online, this thing doesn't stop, it doesn't stutter. And when it comes to using programs like Final Cut to edit 4K videos with multiple layers, or even Affinity Photo to edit photos, it handles it no problem. And speaking of programs, here's a short message from today's video sponsor. A lot of you probably know about Microsoft Office. You either used it before or you're currently using it. And that's generally just because that's what we're used to. However, it's not free. And with the large amount of subscription services out there now that are people having to sign up to, the last thing you want to have to do is pay monthly just for a service to create and edit either documents, PowerPoints, or spreadsheets. And that's where WPS Office comes into play. WPS Office is an all-in-one solution. You get a writer, slides, spreadsheets, even a PDF reader, and so much more all in one place. No need to switch between different apps. It's nice and streamlined and easy to use. And you're probably thinking about compatibility. Well, it's fully compatible with all Microsoft Office formats. It's the best free alternative to Microsoft Office that I've personally ever used. You get the familiar look without having to pay them subscription fees. Still, if you're looking for a powerful, lightweight and free alternative to Microsoft Office, WPS Office is 100% something you should check out. Check the link in the description box below to find out more. Benchmarking apps are gonna show a difference. It doesn't matter whether you're comparing it to the M2, the M3, 
the M4 is going to be faster on these benchmarking apps. And that doesn't necessarily correlate to visibility when it comes to real life experiences. So even though the benchmark app shows you a 10 or 15, 20% increase in the performance, you probably won't notice that when you're running these different apps because it already goes so fast. Like I mentioned, if you're coming from Intel or M1, there's gonna be a big difference and a visible difference. From M2 or M3, not so much of a difference. One concern you should have is if you're doing pro grade level stuff and you happen to want a MacBook Air, something you should know is if you're running these things for a long period of time, because the M4 MacBook Air doesn't have a fan, you can be susceptible to thermal throttling, which will then drop the performance down. So from my experience, from what I've been doing, it does get warm, doesn't get super hot. I haven't experienced thermal throttling yet, but that doesn't mean that if I was to do continuous video editing, continuous video rendering and stuff like that, that it wouldn't kick in and then I would get a lower performance. I'd have to wait for it to cool down. So bear that in mind, obviously on one side of the actual M4 MacBook Air, we've got two Thunderbolt 4 ports and the MagSafe charger. And on the other side, we've only got an AUX port. It would have been great to have a SD card reader or extra USB-C Thunderbolt 4 port on the other side with the AUX port, but we didn't get that. And generally, if you're gonna need more of these things, it's easy enough to get yourself a hub or some sort of dongle to give you them extra ports. So it's not a life or death. It would have been nice if they added it, but they didn't. So we have to live with that. So going from the M3 to the M4 MacBook Air, there may not have been many upgrades when it comes to the actual design of it, but when it comes to the specs, performance and capabilities, there have been some updates. So you get a new 12 megapixel camera with center stage. You get the ability to run two external displays at 6K, 60 Hertz, and have the display of the M4 MacBook Air open. Whereas on the previous generation, the M3, you could only run one display if you had the actual MacBook Air's display open, and you could only run two displays if the M4 MacBook Air's display was closed. So this way you get an extra display, which is gonna be good for a lot of people out there. I know a lot of people were not so happy with that point and that was holding them back from actually getting a MacBook Air, but now you have the option with the M4 processor. When it comes to the battery life, it really depends on what you're doing. Now, Apple does claim 18 hours. I've been getting around 10 to 12, sometimes 13. I haven't really been keeping track 100%, but generally around there. If you're doing a lot of 4K video editing and intense workloads, you know that that's gonna use a lot more power and then you're gonna to have to charge probably later on in the afternoon. If you're just doing something like browsing the web, sending emails, watching YouTube online and stuff like that, unless you're running five Chrome tabs, <laughs> the battery will generally last you a long time. You can't really beat the value you're gonna get from the base model in for MacBook Air. Under $1,000 or if you're a student, under 900, for that kind of performance is a really good deal. Now, like I mentioned in my previous video, if you wanna go for a little bit extra storage and get two extra GPU cores if you really need it, an extra $200 for the next model up is not a bad deal either. But if you start upgrading the storage to two terabytes, that's when the price is gonna go up way too high and it's not really good value for money. What you can do instead is do what I do. I've got an M4 Pro Mac Mini there, which I use for my day-to-day -day stuff and all my YouTube stuff. That has 512 gigabytes of storage and I didn't really want to get any more. Even checking now with everything installed, I'm only using around 90 gigabytes and the rest is free. Everything else I've got, my Final Cut projects, all my YouTube files are on an external NVMe drive connected to the Thunderbolt port in the back and with a four terabyte NVMe in there, which in combination costs around $200, $250 for the actual hub and the NVMe drive, which is a lot cheaper than upgrading through the Apple website. And that way I've been able to move all my projects to and from the MacBook Air to the M4 Mac Mini, depending on when I wanna edit what. So it's become very easy like that. And it's a nice and easy way to expand the storage and have extra benefits instead of upgrading on the Apple website. So after a week, here's the deal. The M4 MacBook Air is probably one of the best Ultrabooks out right now, especially if you're looking to just get into the Mac laptop space without spending lots of money. It's definitely a good option. You're gonna get great performance, at a great price. It's light, it's fast, you get great battery life, but it's not perfect to remember that. Some of the things I mentioned before is you've got that lack of ports and the lack of a fan. So if them things are gonna bother you, maybe going for the MacBook Pro is gonna be a better option. When it comes to upgrading, if you've got an M1 or anything older, like an Intel based MacBook, upgrading, you're definitely gonna see a big, big change. If you've got an M3, 
maybe hold off until the M5 version comes out unless you really want to upgrade or unless you really need them extra features like being able to connect two external displays while having the actual MacBook display open. So yeah, that was my one week of the M4 MacBook Air. If I did help you, let me know down below in the comments box. Let me know also if you've got a MacBook Air and which model you did get. And if I owned your subscription, hit that subscribe button below, like the video, share it with your friends and family, and I will catch you on the next one.